please, for the love of God, do not waste your money on this. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by RGB Swap, a better alternative to eBay that I really think you should take a look at. RGB Swap is a marketplace exclusively for selling and buying computer parts that offers much lower fees than competitors such as eBay as well as greater protection against scams. Whether you're a buyer or a seller, you're guaranteed to be protected since all orders have to be paid for first and the funds are held for 48 hours after the buyer receives the item or they leave feedback, ensuring that you never get sold a bad item. Additionally, all disputes are manually reviewed and PayPal is used exclusively for an extra layer of security. I gotta tell you guys, I like this website a lot and I really want it to take off as a better alternative to eBay, so please, if you're interested in buying or selling PC parts online, click the link in the description below and give it a shot. I think you'll really like it. Alright, so recently Asus announced a new monitor, the PG32UQX, which everyone is absolutely losing their minds over because it's the first mini LED monitor that we have seen so far. And on top of that, it also has very impressive specs. However, there's a couple huge problems I have with the PG32UQX that, at least for me personally, make it a huge waste of money. Now, first of all, let's go ahead and talk about those specs, and then I'll tell you why I have such a huge problem with this display and why I would recommend that nobody waste 3000 US dollars on this display. So, according to Asus, the PG32UQX is a 4K 144Hz IPS panel with an HDR 1400 certification, which is definitely impressive. I believe that's the highest HDR rating that I've seen on any monitor to date. So you're definitely going to be getting a very good HDR experience out of this monitor. And it's a mini LED monitor, and it also is a G-Sync monitor. So yeah, the specs overall are looking really, really impressive. And as you can tell, this is definitely a high-end monitor for those PC gamers with like an RTX 3090 or 3080 Ti, or maybe even an RTX 3080. 80 or even a 6900 XT. For those of you who have a really high-end graphics card, uh, you may be considering a super high-end monitor like this. However, I have a couple problems with this monitor and I would certainly recommend that none of you pick it up and here's why. So, the first issue that I have with this uh, PG32UQX is an issue that I have with pretty much all LCD displays and that's that it has local dimming. Now, don't get me wrong, local dimming on an LCD display is actually a good thing as it's going to give you a superior quality image over an LCD display that does not have local dimming. However, uh, when you compare an LCD display to an OLED display, uh, the reason why they need local dimming is because if you take a look at an OLED display, they have much greater control on a per pixel level of the actual brightness of each individual pixel, whereas an LCD display, uh, you need local dimming to try and uh, reduce the areas that shouldn't be lit up. And unfortunately, what it leads to is you get kind of a haloing effect around that bright object on your screen. So let's say you have a black background and you're moving your mouse around, uh, what you're going to notice is that, you know, right around the mouse, there's not actually any black pixels. It's going to be very, very bright and it's going to look kind of washed out and a little bit weird. And you're definitely going to be noticing this in some scenarios. And this is actually very distracting for me. And I really don't like seeing this on a display. So it's kind of LCD's uh, best way of getting as close as it can to getting that same picture quality as you get on an OLED, but it just can't quite make it. And even on the PG30, 32 UQX, which has 1,152 local dimming zones, it just still cannot even get close to the amount of accuracy that you get on an OLED display, and I find this very distracting. So if you're spending 3,000 US dollars on a display, it's very disappointing to see that they still haven't been able to solve this issue, even on a mini LED display. And now the second issue that I have with the PG32 UQX, and this is a huge one for me, is that it does not have HDMI 2.1. That's right, you heard me correctly, uh, this 3 thousand US dollar monitor does not have HDMI 2.1. You are limited to, I believe, HDMI 2.0, and then you also have an option for uh, DisplayPort 1.4. And what that means is that if you decide to hook up something over HDMI, let's say that you decide to hook up a PS5 or Xbox Series X, you're going to be limited to 4K 60 frames per second, which is going to be a compromised experience. Now, admittedly, the PS5 and Xbox Series X are unlikely to be able to push many titles over 4K 60 FPS, but still, 
still, uh, yeah, paying over $3,000 and not being able to see the full potential out of these consoles is very disappointing. It also means that if you want to use HDMI on your PC, that's pretty much not an option unless you're buying a $3,000 monitor uh, that's 4K 144 hertz, just use it at 60 hertz. At which point, I definitely would be questioning why you're purchasing this, but also if you take a look at the DisplayPort 1.4, that's still not enough bandwidth to push 4K 144 hertz with HDR, uh, so you're going to have to use Display Stream Compression, which according to Aces, Display Stream Compression won't be compromising your image too much, and I have heard similar things from other people as well, but again, it's still a compromise that you're making, and when you're spending 3,000 US dollars on a display to get some sort of compromise at all is just really not acceptable for me. So overall, my major issue with this display is the price because you have this, you know, really, really nice display on paper, but you have all these various issues that you're going to have to put up with and you're paying just so much money for this display that I just simply cannot recommend this to anyone whatsoever. I think this is a complete waste of money if you're looking at this display and I would highly suggest uh, you look at other options or just wait it out. And, you know, personally, uh, I would suggest going with maybe the C1 OLED 48 inch from uh, LG. It's a very, very nice display. It's OLED. You're going to have a much better picture quality as compared to this. It also has very, very good response times. I think it's a much better option. Now, again, it's a 48 inch display, so this may not be a good option for everyone. You're going to have to push it a little bit further back. And if you don't want to do that, I understand that. However, if you are looking at this display, again, I really suggest you don't do it. If you don't want to buy an OLED, my other advice to you would either be to wait out for OLED on a PC monitor or micro LED, or if you don't want to wait, which is definitely understandable as we don't know how long it's going to take until we get those technologies on our actual monitors, which will be a huge improvement over LCD, uh, at least in the form that LCD is right now. Um, your other option would be just to uh, maybe spend a little bit less money on a display, maybe start looking at a used PG27UQ. You can find those over on eBay for around a thousand US dollars. It has very similar issues to this display, so it's definitely uh, still a lot of money to spend on a display that has compromises. However, you know, I have used the PG27UQ for a long time, and honestly, you know, going from HDR1000 to HDR 1400, while I'm sure it does look a little bit better, HDR1000 is still very, very good looking. Uh, you're still having the same local dimming zone issues. However, you're going to have even more issues with the local dimming zones on the PG27 27 UQ, so keep that in mind. But again, it's another option, uh, an alternative to the 32 UQX that's much, much cheaper. And honestly, guys, I would suggest you spend one third the cost to get very, very similar amounts of performance. But hey, that's just what I think. Would you spend 3,000 US dollars on a PC monitor? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and Nvidia get more stock. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.